Hey there, welcome in my session on Azure Service Catalog. My name is Peter de Tander, and you can find me on social media at PDTIT or Azure Apes, or feel free to send me an email, peter at pdtit.be. To share a few words about myself, I'm the CEO and lead technical trainer at PDTIT, a company that I started about 10 years ago. For the last couple of years, my focus is working as an Azure architect and trainer, providing Azure readiness workshops all over the world to larger Microsoft customers, Microsoft partners, and Microsoft internal teams. I'm an Azure MVP and an Azure Advisors member. In my free time, I'm still connected to the Azure world by publishing books, creating courseware, or overall performing technical writing. You can connect to our Azure Apes community if you want, and the easiest would be connecting to the website azureplatformexperts.com. Today's session has a pretty light agenda, but nevertheless, um, I still hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna start with explaining what Azure Service Catalog is, followed by walking you through the different steps it takes to actually build an Azure Service Catalog, followed by sharing the insights on how the Azure Service Catalog items can be deployed and wrapping up the session by going through an end-to-end -end demo showing the different steps and really deploying the Service Catalog item. Now, obviously, starting with the key question, what is Azure Service Catalog? Azure Service Catalog offers organizations a catalog li a library or um, a collection, if you want, of approved solutions for Azure. So it really allows you to deploy Azure resources like virtual machines, or maybe even a combination of different Azure resources like web apps, IaaS components, anything you can deploy in Azure, but from a non-IT perspective. So really allowing employees in the organization to not only easily discover the different workloads of offered by IT, but also allowing for self-service deployment. A service catalog is also known as Azure Managed Applications. The concept is pretty similar, but there are also a couple of differences. Service catalog is an offering by MSPs and ISVs to their customers, where service catalog items are mainly managed by the partners who maintain, update, and service them. So customers can basically just deploy the workload without requiring specific knowledge. And the, although this context is similar to the Azure Marketplace, using managed applications assumes the partner attaches services and support to it, as the items are self-contained and sealed to the customer. So Azure Managed Applications really provides this ecosystem between Microsoft partners, ISVs, and their customers from like a hosted um, managed services offering. Now the main difference, however, between the two environments is really that the managed applications are offered to an external user, where Azure Service Catalog items are offered to the internal business users. But the technical components under the hood are totally identical. So now you know what the Azure Service Catalog stands for. Let's say a few words on how to create such a catalog item. First of all, you create a template in which you define your resources to deploy using the managed application template. In a second file, you define the user interface elements that will be published in the portal when the end user is actually deploying the managed application. You combine the two items in a zip file. You upload the zip file to Azure Blob Storage. And next to that, you define which user or which security group or application, if you want, needs access to the resource group in that specific subscription. Lastly, you create a managed application definition pointing to the zip file and requesting access to your security group. 
So drilling down a bit on the main template.json, it's a typical Azure Resource Manager JSON template file in which you describe what resources get deployed. Now, most important here, besides obviously making sure that the syntax and structure of your JSON file is correct, the most important thing is that the file is case sensitive and must be named main template.json with a small m in the beginning and a capital T for template. If the file is not named in that way, then the deployment will fail and tell you that the file is case sensitive. So that's pretty important. Pretty similar for the second file, the create UI definition. It's again another Azure Resource Manager template, but this time it's really used for generating the interface the users get to see when they're deploying the service catalog item. And again, case sensitive, starting with a small c in the beginning, a capital U and a capital D for definition. Drilling down a bit on the structure of this create UI definition JSON file, it starts with a handler and the handler for now should always point to microsoft.compute.multivm. The version for now points to the 0, 1, 2 preview. And in the parameters, you define the basics and the different steps, which are mainly referring to the actual elements of the GUI, like list boxes, drop down menus, and the different step by step scenarios. And the output is providing you the overview of the parameters used throughout your deployment. So once you have those two files, you can create your zip file. So really taking the main template JSON, the create UI definition JSON, and adding them into a zip file, where luckily the zip file can have about any custom name you want. You store both files in the root of the zip file, because otherwise they won't be recognized. So no subfolders are allowed within the zip file. You upload the zip file to a shared location from where it can be retrieved. And obviously the recommended location would be Azure Blob Storage. And in the last step, you create a managed application definition pointing to the zip file. Now creating the actual service catalog definition, again, you start from your Blob Storage container, defining the privacy as Blob and uploading your zip file in there. You could use Azure Storage Explorer or um, like PowerShell commandlets to do so. Next to that, you create a new Azure AD security group and you read out its object ID. So you can just browse to Azure AD, selecting the group and reading out the object ID. Because as you can see in the underlying Azure RM managed application PowerShell commandlet, you need to point to the blob you need to point to your security group in the authorization parameter and everything else is pretty descriptive for the display name of your managed application, the Azure location where you want to deploy it and the resource group in which you want to have the service catalog definition item. When all that is done from the backend, I would say from the IT admin perspective, you can continue and having your end users actually deploying the service catalog item. They connect to the Azure portal, creating a new Azure resource, selecting service catalog managed application. It will show the list of all current available applications, selecting it, and depending on how you build up your GUI um, layout, they might need to enter, complete some settings, some parameters, and kicking off the actual deployment. So with that, um, walking you through the demo, sharing some insights on the JSON files, the zip file that I created, um, and showing you the actual deployment from the portal. So starting from my JSON files. So for now, it's a pretty easy JSON file in which I'm deploying a storage account. So this is literally a JSON file 
copied from GitHub Azure Quick Start templates in which I'm defining my parameter up here, the storage account name prefix, a storage account type and the location, which is um, to be selected by the users. Next to that, I define a variable and my actual Azure resource components and providing an output with the name of the storage account. So pretty um, basic template if you ask me, but again, it's just an example, right? Next to that, the create UI definition. And this is real fun because you can really build up the different steps in your deployment process and allocating um, the descriptions for each and every step. So in the first step, storage configuration, I'm gonna add a label, please provide me your MVP days storage settings. Next to that, I want a new blade title, MVP days storage settings, in which I'm pointing to the storage account from the other JSON template and providing a prefix, MVP days storage account name prefix. And you will find out later on when I'm deploying the resource, um, what this actually refers to. I'm gonna give the user some options on how to define the storage replication. And again, this is um, optional. You could also define the default one and removing the other options, making it a bit more straight forward for the user to actually deploy them. So again, making sure that your files are case sensitive and next to that, you create a service catalog application zip file. Using Azure Storage Explorer, you upload this file into a new container in a blob storage, which makes it available to the users. Next to that, you run the PowerShell script that I showed you in the PowerPoint, pointing to your Azure Active Directory security group. And the documentation there wasn't all that clear, so I'll just try to help you here a little bit. So what you do is creating a security group which I called service catalog group, pretty original as a name. And what you need is the GUID, also known as the object ID for the given user um, or the security group, which basically means that this group has the deployment rights to execute um, the actual service catalog deployment. Once your PowerShell script has run, you can create a new resource and you search for service catalog managed application. In here, we find our MVP days storage account where it's reading out my GUI definition. It's still telling me the name of the blade, create MVP days storage account and it's giving me certain options here. So I need to create one. This could be MVP live demo resource group, giving the user the flexibility to select a location. And again, this is all based on your UI definition. And remember from my UI definition JSON file, please provide me your MVP days storage settings is literally the information that pops up here. The storage account, MVP days, storage demo, something like this. And from the other item in the GUI definition, standard local redundant storage, but still giving the flexibility to select any of the other items, where you can see that the other items that were not defined in the GUI are not available for my user. And obviously, again, if you remove this item, then it's almost like selecting the deployment and not giving the user any flexibility to um, define any settings. So from here, kicking off the deployment, it's creating a pretty basic storage account, so it shouldn't take that long. It's ongoing, so not really gonna wait for that, which means that we're at the end of the session in which I started explaining you what an Azure Service Catalog is 
detailed you the steps on how to actually build an Azure Service Catalog, walked you to the deployment, and wrapped up the session doing a live demo. So with that, I would like to thank you for being in my session. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, feel free to reach out, even shout out on social media or sending me an email with your feedback. I wish you a nice rest of the MVP Days conference.